Hello everyone, Nubkex here. Welcome back to Nub Raids. And in today's video, I'm giving you an updated guide for 2023 as per popular request after we looked back at my very first video on the channel, which was a Hydra guide. Uh, but yeah, for beginners, stepping into Hydra for the first time, let's be honest, you're probably getting absolutely destroyed. I'm going to help you to yeah figure out what to do and how to approach it in today's video. Before we get started, <laughs> there is one fun thing I get to show you visually here. Number one, I've got new lights to light me up better and make it look better. But more than that, go alongside the new lights, we have a new webcam. So yeah, I don't know if I move around and all sorts of stuff. Let me know what you think, but I think it looks much better, I hope. Um, <laughs> it should be much better quality anyway. I can still tweak it, of course. I've, I've only just set it up so we can still tweak all the settings and get it looking perfect. But hopefully this will be a nice upgrade for the channel and it will look better. I was feeling my camera quality was kind of bad. So yeah, let's get rid of this old one. Move the new one over. Boom, new improved nub raids. Let's go. Right. Let's get to the topic of the video, though, for today, which, of course, is the Hydra clan boss. It's a monster. This is very, very difficult. Oh, there's a little preview of some really good teams. We'll come to those. Uh, but let's talk about this. Uh, one thing I'm going to do. Oh, one sec. OK, I had to get this up. One thing we're going to do. I've got this. This is uh, my buddy YST. I'm sure everyone knows YST. But uh, he sent me his roster. This is his free to play account that is two months into the game. And I thought this was a, a pretty good example. Obviously, he is a content creator, so he's very efficient with his account. He knows exactly what he's doing uh, and he, he's doing a really good job. Looking at this, you can already see we don't have that many level 60 champions. Our champion pool is very limited. Certainly, even at this point, two months in, we can make a bit of a dent in the Hydra. But to give you uh, just a, a ballpark of where you should be at, I think going into normal Hydra for most people is going to happen between probably three to six months into the game. Realistically speaking, you need a lot of level 60 champions. You need to get a bit lucky with some specific champions, and it can be very, very difficult at the start. It's really there to kick your butt, and it unlocks way too early, to be honest. But even if you just get smaller chests, it's great to go in and start collecting Mithrala fragments, which are amazing, soul stones. Clan Gold, the drops from Hydra are actually really good. That's another thing that's been improved since it first came out. The drops are extremely good. Um, but yeah, so it's going to take you a while. When you get about six months into the game, that's when normal should definitely be on lockdown. Hard should be going pretty well for you because you're going to get a bunch of stuff coming through at that point. You're going to be, you know, in the clan shop, right? You're going to have picked up potentially uh, some of these fragments for champions like Yannicka or your Carl. You'll be building those up. Over in your Tag Arena Bazaar, you will have um, come in and you'll hopefully have built up Drekstar, right? About six months in. Arbiter might be coming close. Sill of the Drakes from the daily logins is going to be coming in and you're going to pick up Tanix, who's not bad. Vizix is amazing, really up at, all the way into Brutal Hydra. She's absolutely fantastic champion. So you're going to be getting a lot of, of champions on top of starting fusions, starting to actually pull some champions. So definitely six months in is where you're really going to see a very big improvement in Hydra. Normal should become quite easy and hard is, you know, something that becomes much more doable. I'd say pushing up into Brutal, into Nightmare becomes a lot more challenging. Um, you know, Brutal is definitely a one year plus thing. I would say typically you're going to want to have beaten Faction Wars and got Lydia. That's sort of the, the stage. And moving into Nightmare is really, you know, probably something like the two year mark for most people when you've got the quality of gear, you've got some good champions to go in and actually take it down. So you need really good champions, good gear, etc. We're going to really focus on normal and hard here today, right? Getting you started, getting your foot in. And, and what do we do? <laughs> what do we do? So we're going to use YST's account as a great example of building up a team. Then I'll put that team into action. Uh, obviously, my gear is so much better than what YST has. So for the purposes of this video, I'm going to be teaching you about normal. I will actually go in and I will fight hard to sort of supplement that a little bit. Another a difference that you have there. Oh, there's a nice hard team. I just literally popped up recording if you want to use one. Uh, another difference that does happen. Uh, slight spoiler, don't look at that. But the, basically, you know, you've got six different Hydra heads. The really nice thing about normal difficulty is that it's very likely that you'll get the same heads to respawn. Now, every time you go up in difficulty, it becomes more likely that a different head comes in, which means that when you go into Nightmare, 
you need to be able to deal with every single one of these heads because any of them could show up, right? And all of them probably will show up. Uh, whereas on normal, you can go in and you can prepare for just the four that are in the starting rotation and you can get lucky and never see these other two. So that can really narrow things down and make it much easier to do this. Let me show you a couple of resources here that are really going to help you. If you come over, this is my Discord channel, uh, which you can find the links for in the description down below. But if you come into this useful info tab, I put a bunch of stuff in here that should be very helpful. So for example, the Hydra cheat sheet, we're going to look at that in a second. If you want to see um, stats for the Hydra, it's up here as well. So let's take a look at both of these so you can get a rough gist. I'll show you the Hydra stats first. This was made by Bobo. Now it's no longer maintained, but it is still up to date as of time of recording this video. We are expecting, I would say, updates to Hydra at some point this year. So things will probably change then, but for now it is correct. But for example, we are in rotation five, I do believe, uh, at time of recording. There we go, rotation five. You can come down, oh, cheat, cheat. You can come down here and we can go to normal and you can see the stats of all these heads and it will give you a rough idea. This is part of why it's so difficult. You can see that these heads range from one four, uh, sorry, 100 speed is the slowest. That's head of suffering, it's very slow, but they go up to you know 210. And we've got a few at 190, 180, 160. Starting out, that's going to be very rough, right? You're really looking at the point where you're building champions over 200 speed. It's when stuff gets a lot more comfortable, you're going to be able to take it down. You can see the resistance. You want to exceed the resistance by probably at least 20 points. So it's not too bad. Bearing in mind, you do get plus 50 when Head of Suffering is out. So the resistance requirements go up. So about 200 for normal is fine. And then this is their accuracy. And honestly, like... To build enough resistance starting out, it's not something that's relevant. We might touch on that later, talking about things like mischief tanks and such. But building enough resistance, you'd need at least 100 more than this really to be safe, going all the way up to 150. So you're looking at 350 to 400 resistance. Not going to be very viable starting out, right? It's just something you're better off ignoring as a very beginner. But yeah, you can see the stats there if you want to see it. Then this cheat sheet, I think, should be really helpful. Uh, and what I've done in this cheat sheet, so I've shown you the key debuffs and sort of rank them, the key buffs as well, and rank them in some utility things. And this gives you a really good idea. We'll put this into practice and actually build a team. But for example, coming in, the most imp I would say the most important buff, I should probably put it at the top, be block buffs, right? We come in with block buffs and we lock out so much of what this Hydra is trying to do, right? We can block Head of Mischief stealing our buffs. We can stop Wrath getting increased attack or reflect damage and block debuffs. We can stop the ally protections going out. Very important, we can stop the poison cloud going out, which is just awful. It can really ruin your team. So we can do stuff like that to, you know, to, to help control it. Very important. And you can see the same thing here. Decreased defense is really important. An AoE decreased defense champ, so you can actually do some damage. Decrease attack is quite nice to reduce the damage you're going to take. Provoke is huge specifically for the head of decay who can cleanse. Um, and yeah, you put this stuff together and it gives you an idea. Same thing with buffs, bringing in shields to keep you alive is really good. Perfect veil so you don't get feared is quite good. Increased speed is nice, strengthens really good. I might rearrange these a little bit to make this a bit more clear. There's probably too many things in the S tier right here, but the point is, this will give you a rough gist and give you kind of a toolkit to start looking at champions and saying, okay, I get how it works. For the specific heads, I've sort of put the key bits in here as well, so you can take a look at the four heads that are up for any rotation. See, okay, these are the things that are really useful for it, so I can bring them in. So yeah, Provoke is amazing for Decay, but hey, if Decay's not in the starting four heads, you can leave that out, right? Let's say these are the four starting heads. I'll try to bring in these things as much as possible. And I could ignore these two, for an example. Um, and we've got some stats here, which will break things down, which I think is quite nice. So sample stats for a support or a damage dealer, accuracy, resistance, require that sort of thing. And then I do have some sample teams and team building tips in here. These are from actual members on my Discord. So we've got a couple of examples from Hard. We've got an example from Nightmare. I might add some more of these in as well. And of course, there's plenty of example teams on my channel too. Let's go in. Let's build up a team. You've kind of seen the team already, but let me show you. So this is YST. This is his account, new account. Let's take a look at some of these champions and what I'd be bringing in. So we're kind of limited, but 
luckily, he got very lucky and over in his vault, he doesn't have them built up yet and you really want to get them to level 50 and preferably level 60 and booked up. But first thing I'll be looking for, Ugo, gonna bring in our block buffs and decrease defense. Big win. Okay, fantastic. That's number one. Uh, number two, well, we're going to want some sort of increased speed or decreased speed. We don't really have that. I actually think Hikatoon is quite nice here. So I'm going to bring in Hikatoon. She is a champion everyone gets. She's like the one month login reward. So everyone can get her speed aura, increased speed for our team. She can put decreased speed A1. She's not the best champion for this. Ugo is extremely good. Um, but Hikatoon as an accessible option is quite nice. For YST, he might decide to use Deacon Armstrong instead. He's sort of similar with turn meter and a speed aura. Uh, I'm not going to bring in Deacon for this one just because he's a bit harder to get. Let's go with the, the one that's super accessible. Uh, I'd definitely be bringing in Rhonda as sort of our main damage dealer here. She's the login legendary. Anyone who's watching this, again, at time of publishing, that's really in a position to do Hydra at all, is going to have Rhonda because she was the recent login champion. If you don't have Rhonda, you could just bring in your starter champion instead. That's going to be totally fine. Just whoever your best damage dealer is to get some damage out there. Uh, we're going to actually bring in another second damage dealer. We're going to bring in Mordecai here, who does AoE HP burn. And HP burn is a very good way of doing damage to Hydra, and it's fairly accessible. So starting out in normal, you might not have any HP burners. YST's been lucky to pull Mordecai. But the good news is that you can get uh, some very accessible ones. We've mentioned already uh, Drekstar Blood Twin, who burns with his passive. He also brings a Provoke as well. Fantastic. So he's a great option. He's got burns on his A1. You get him guaranteed from the Tag Arena Bazaar. So definitely get those fragments every single day. Get Drekstar as soon as you can. He will help a ton. Uh, your second champion then from Doom Tower Normal. So it takes, it takes roughly three months of clearing all the secret rooms to get these. You get Archmage Helmet first. Acop the Seared second, so it's going to take you maybe seven or eight months maybe playing the game to get Acop the Seared, something like that, but he comes in with an AoE burn on a three turn cooldown. So you will get a burn champion. He also brings in shields and a HP aura, which is real nice, so he's good options. You will get there, but you might need some luck to pull some, but if you get a burner, you'll see when we do our run that it's very, very strong. Uh, let's bring in some champions to keep us alive. We'll bring in the Pytheon that we have here. There's actually quite a lot of danger with this, right? Because we're not going to be able to stop the Head of Mischief from stealing our buffs. This is something you really need to consider. Block debuffs is really bad if the Hydra steals it. Same thing with any of the most powerful buffs like block damage or counter attack. Increased crit rates, another really bad one for the Hydra to steal, right? Because it tries to steal your buffs and spread them around. If this gets stolen and spread, it's really bad. So you might be better off not bringing in Pytheon, even though he's really good. Now, what sort of champions will we bring in instead? Really, we're looking for anyone to sort of heal us up, keep us alive. I would say a great one that you'll get six months in that basically everyone builds. Sill of the Drakes is going to be fantastic. She's got the decreased speed on her A1. She has a revive on her A3 and then putting out lots of healing. Uh, whenever anyone takes a turn. So she'll really help you to stay alive. Everyone gets her, everyone builds her pretty much. So Sylva the Drakes or anyone like that would be a good supplement. We'll bring in, because uh, he's level 60, we're going to bring in, uh, I can't think of his name. It's completely escaped. What is his name? It's completely escaped me. Mind has gone blank. Taragi the Frog. There we go. Of course, we're going to bring him in as a Provoke champion. It's not perfect. It's not, you know, the highest chance to Provoke, but it will increase. But he'll help us lock down the Cleanse Head a bit. He's going to heal and protect our team, which is nice. He does bring us a decrease attack, which is nice. So yeah, Taragi should be a good option here. Uh, and then for our final champion, who did I decide to bring in? I don't even remember at this point. Uh, I've completely blanked. We've got most of the key things now, I would say, at this particular point. Who did I decide to bring in in the end? Prof professional YouTuber right here, guys. Professional. <laughs> A consummate professional. Literally completely forgotten. Um... That's it. I've, I've talked about six. That's why I haven't, I haven't forgotten. I've already talked about them all. I'm just incompetent accounting. So we'll take that, I guess. <laughs> but there you go. So this is the team. Um, what does this team lack? So we don't have a decreased speed. It's going to be a bit awkward to land decrease attack, right? Um, there are going to be some of the main difficulties and that, that 
block debuffs could be very dangerous, but there should be, at the same time, a very solid team that still brings a lot of those key things that we want, and we should still be able to put up a pretty good show for ourselves. So let's dive in here. We'll go in, um, and we'll do a little bit here on manual. I won't make you watch the whole thing, but we'll just play a little bit here so you can see what's going on. And this is sort of the gist as well, guys. I'll show you the bills after. The first time you're going into Hydra, you're really going to want to be doing this on manual difficulty, right? Just to make sure everything lands, uh, lines up properly. So we'll just A1 right here. We're going to try not use the cleanse from Python and put up the block debuffs until we're safe. We'd be pretty safe right now because we do have block buffs up on Head of Mischief, but we want to be careful. We're going to speed boost here with Haikatoon. Uh, we've got our AOE HP burn here which is nice. So we'll put out that burn and we're definitely going to go for this provoke. And there we go. We provoke here, which is going to stop him from cleansing, which is great. And then we'll go in with our AOE nuke here with Rhonda. She's going to do some damage. And that's sort of the gist of this run. One thing I'll say, I do think it's, it's usually best to target Head of Decay at this particular level of play. The reason being, pretty simply, that... Um, you're not going to have enough provokes to stop him. He will eventually come in and cleanse, and that can make things kind of awkward for you. Let's try land or decrease speed on him, slow him down. It's a weak hit because of affinity this time around, so that sucks a little bit. We'll do some turn meter right here. Uh, but it's just something to be aware of and to, uh, to watch out for. So I don't think we need to put a shield on everyone quite yet. We'll just smack him with the A1, try to get decrease attack, didn't get it. We're just going to keep hitting this head, and we're going to try kill him off uh, to just buy us some time and make things a bit more consistent. Rhonda has a chance to join in an ally attack with her passive, but she's decided not to. We got lucky with a weak hit there. We'll take it. And we've got a couple of nasty debuffs on us right now. So this time, I think we'll be cleansing those off. Let's come in and smack this guy again. Actually landed the decrease speed right there. A little bit too late, but say la vie. Uh, but you can sort of see the gist. So he's actually done a single target cleanse. Okay, that's a little bit awkward for us. We'll cleanse this stuff off. Put the decrease defense things back on. Taragi, unfortunately, still has a turn to go. So that is unfortunate. We'll come in and hit. Uh, so we're going to have this cleanse coming around. So there's definitely a scary moment, I would say, right here, where we're not going to have block buffs ready to go. Here we go. Rhonda actually doing an ally attack. Great. Get some damage out. So uh, we're going to have to be a little bit patient. Uh, but we should be safe enough. We're going to want to make sure to be very careful with putting any of these buffs back on. Let's actually go in with an A1 at this point. We don't want increased speed to be stolen by Mischief, which could totally happen. See, he's now free to steal our stuff, and we have no way of blocking him from spreading it, so we do need to be careful. See, he's pretty dangerous. He's stolen that, which is definitely bad. Do a couple of smacks here. We can get a heal off. Okay. We'll actually put a shield back on, try protect us a little bit. Come in and punch this guy some. He is going to spread this block debuffs, and there's nothing much we can do about it. So that's sort of some of the randomness. We'll get burnout first, which is nice. We got slightly outrun, unfortunately. So we'll just have to wait this one out. Um, we'll actually cleanse these off right now. He might start stealing stuff. I am going to throw this out, which is a slight waste, but just to stop him stealing anymore. And we're going to save Taragi's move at this point, I think. And uh, yeah, we'll just go in with some A1s. So yeah, it's kind of timing your provokes around it trying to be smart about it as much as possible. We might as well go in with their AOE attack right now because all of their debuffs are blocked anyway. Um, but you sort of get the gist of what we're trying to do, what is happening. Uh, yeah, so I'll basically I'll run this one through. I think you sort of see how it works and what the idea is. Um, trying to time your buffs. There can definitely be luck involved. There can sometimes be a lot of luck involved. Uh, let's try hit him. If we get decreased speed on him, we did. That's actually fantastic. It's difficult to target him. Oh, actually, let's stick through with this. We have to break Rhonda free. Uh, and the way that this works, essentially, is that um, you have a five-turn cooldown the first time you're uh, eaten, uh, and then that will decrease every time. So the second time someone gets eaten, it's going to go down to four. After that, will go down to three, etc., etc. And it does get very dangerous uh, once it gets down to maybe two turns on the timer. That can get very bad. Let's increase our speed here. I think Ugo, if I remember right, does have the block buffs ready to go. At least I hope so, because we are going to go in and... Uh, you know what? Let's, let's put the shield up and everyone keep him safe. Yeah, Ugo has this. We can stop him stealing our stuff, so I'm feeling safe enough about that. So stuff got stolen, but we're okay. And we're really just going to always focus down the head that consumes one of our champions to make sure we can get them out. And this, in fact, is kind of awkward because the burn is going to expire and we're going to have a whole turn where we can't hit him at all. 
So that becomes fairly dangerous for us. Let's see what we can do. We'll get the burn up on everyone else. This is definitely going to help. And this is a reason we bring in two damage dealers as well. Actually, a very important reason, which is, oh, he did a double turn, so we're good. But it means that he starts ticking down quite quickly. You can see why when the turns get longer, things can get pretty awkward. Let's see if we can land a decrease speed on him. We didn't. Um, but yeah, so th that's it. You just want to try to break them out as, as much as you can. Obviously, if this shield overlaps with anything, it can get rough. You can definitely have bad luck as well. One of the good pieces of news, I suppose, <laughs> is that when you get further on and you get more consistent, this will get easier. So I'm not going to cleanse off right now. We're going to try survive through because this head could steal our stuff and it would be bad. Okay, I wasn't paying attention. We actually do have block debuffs ready, so I should have cleansed. We'll do it next turn. There we go. Let's cleanse this stuff off. All right, good. Come in and smack this head again. So we'll just break Rhonda free. There we go. She's broken free thanks to the, uh, the burns helping. And we should be much easier to break Ugo, Ugo free next time because we'll actually have Rhonda to help, who's much, much stronger. So we'll do a bit of a cleanse right there. There's their cleanse, which is the dangerous part. And we'll go back to beating up this head. So you get the gist of it. This is, again, awkward. And this is where those lack of provokes and that lack of decreased speed starts to actually become quite a big burden. Um, becomes quite a big burden. We actually got lucky because we've got Relentless on Ugo, which is going to carry us through. And it's going to stop this being spread, which is absolutely huge for us. That's very helpful and very lucky. Um, yeah, this is where better champions, better gear, etc. becomes consistent. Oh, this is nasty. Let's see if we get through this. Can we break through this shield? It could be difficult. Lucky, he doesn't have a cleanse coming up anytime soon. Rhonda actually has a pretty big hit right here. She mostly weak hit, though, it seems like. Uh, and yeah, let's just keep hitting him and we're just going to focus fire on this and hope that we get away with it. This head can steal away. Luckily, he actually hits uh, Pythion, who does have lots of resistance for me, so it didn't get stolen. But it's pretty rough stuff. Pretty, pretty tough. Certainly not easy to do this by any means. Rhonda gets an extra hit, which definitely helps. And cool, let's try to get the decreased speed to buy us more time. We got it, which is really good. We're going to save our provoke for when this guy comes back around. Rhonda got one good hit only. <laughs> Unfortunately, I think we have to cleanse at this point. And this guy's going to spread, but there's not much we can do about it. We just got to stay alive. We've broken through the first shield. Uh, yeah, but we'll break this guy free. She got only the increased attack stolen, actually. That's interesting. Let's go for an AoE hit. Okay, we're still good. We don't need to... Um... Yeah, we don't need to do anything else. I actually will put up the shield just to try make sure Rhonda stays safe. They're going to do an AoE cleanse next turn, so we're going to make sure to save our burn until then. And there we go. We actually broke him free, which is nice. Punch him a little bit. And right, I'll be back after this run. We'll see how we do. And I'll show you how it goes on normal as well afterwards. So I'll be right back. All right, guys, we're coming to the end. We did the whole thing on manual. And there we go. Hard difficulty. We actually came in with 25 million. We'll see exactly where we end up. I'm just letting it run out on auto here for the final little bit. Doesn't doesn't really matter at this point. We'll just get a tiny bit extra damage. But that is actually, believe it or not, a one key on hard. Now, what I will say is that, of course, we've got much, much, much better gear in these champions than you would have. But sort of the point of this was to take champions that we had on a two-month free-to-play account, uh, throw them in, do it on hard difficulty to compensate for the gear, uh, and see how we do and we got the one key there so it shows you building the team what it can do and you can sort of see you know how how effective mordecai is with that burn but even so you know just a normal damage dealer ronda now she'd be better with giant slayer and she'd be better with more speed she's built as an arena nuker for me which isn't perfect for this um still able to put out good damage your starter champion will still put out good damage or whoever your best damage dealer is so yeah pretty cool the biggest problem with this team was certainly Hikatoon is very inconsistent with a decrease speed, so we're really lacking decrease speed. Um, Taragi was okay, but you could definitely find better provokers, someone like a Seeker as an epic would be a better provoker. Uh, a big problem we ran into a lot that you saw in the bits that we played and kept happening throughout was that Pytheon, while he is super good, because we didn't have perfect speed control and provokes and stuff, that we would get block buffs or block debuffs, excuse me, stolen and spread around the Hydra heads. That happened a ton of times and that totally messes you up. So that was a really big downside for this run. But yeah, 
the point of that was to show you and give you an idea for how that sort of key would go. Uh, you can see some example teams here if you want to take a quick look at the sort of champions people are using. Max HP champions like Royal Guard, Husk become extremely good for Brutal and Nightmare. That's one big difficulty bar you'll have to get over. Champions like Ronda will do really well on lower difficulties, but they'll really fall off on higher difficulties. If we're just to throw this team in on auto here on normal, so you get a quick glance at it, uh, as well. You'll see how, how much easier normal is for us. Um, but yeah, again, the point is basically just to give you an idea. We'll still kill off this head because he's going to provoke and we don't really have a way to deal with it. But the point is just to give you an idea, give you a gist for the sort of teams that you can do. Uh, you can check out my Discord. I've got plenty of videos to give you more ideas for other champions that you could use and things to look for. Uh, but it is that learning process. Uh, let me know if there are other uh, topics you would like to see in this series. I would be more than happy to do them and to go over them with you. Uh, you can see how quickly, for example, on normal that we're able to kill these heads. We just rip them apart. So like just your, your straight up nukers are going to be super effective here. Whereas Mordecai with the HP burn is not going to do as much damage, for example. Um, but yeah, this should give you a good starting point to get in and to, to start doing some stuff. It's very difficult when you start out. Actually, Rhonda might just kill... Oh, almost. Almost killed him before the cleanse. That was so close. That was very close. Um, but yeah, you know, you'll, you'll get there. You will get there. And the more champions you get, the easier that it becomes. Uh, and of course, always be looking for those top tier fusions that you can get as well. I, I will say this, right? With Hydras, sort of my final tip. You don't really want to go out and build champions specifically for Hydra. What's going to happen is that champions that are just good, generally speaking, and are going to get you through the important progression missions in the game, right? Getting you through the dungeons up to stage 20, getting you through arena, getting you through doom tower normal, getting you through clan boss, just by building up those champions, just good champions, you will end up with 60s, follow the cheat sheet, put that stuff together, and you'll end up with a team that's going to actually smash through normal, kind of no problem, right? You don't want to focus on Hydra specifically. Again, I, I, like we said near the start, you know, three to six months in, you should start be doing pretty well at normal. So if you're not at that point, then maybe, because you really do want to get Mithrala. You want to start getting some stone skin, etc. Um, so at that point, I consider it. And by the way, in normal, if this happens, and one of the heads that you hadn't planned for spawns in, you can feel totally free to just free regroup, right? Pause, free regroup, and go again. You can totally do that. But uh, yeah, you can see here with our team, I think it's about it's 6 million and something for the top key on normal. And we're going to smash through it pretty easily uh, without too much hassle. Now, with very, very good gear compared to anything that you would have at this point. But still, the point stands. We'll just get the 6 million so you can see it, how quick we can do it with this team. These are all the champions we have on a two months free to play. The gear then is something that sort of comes after, comes separately uh, and comes with time, but you'll be able to make it anyway. Right. So here we go. Six million. I think it's 6.6. .6. Let's see. One more hit from Rhonda. I think should do it. She'll take a big chunk out of somebody in a second. Come on, Rhonda. Have a go. She's so slow because <laughs> she's built as an arena nuker. She's got about 140 speed. Here she goes. She's going in. She's going in with a quad punch and punching him. That's fine. I think we've done it. Yeah, I think 6.6. .6. We'll do 6.7 to be safe. There we go. 6.7. We'll get out of there with the free regroup. Um, and we'll double check. We got it. Yeah, 6.66. .6. So 6.7. We had it in the bag. Um, there you go. Let me show you these the champions really fast so you can see. Will they show up my recently used? Uh, no, they won't. <laughs> Unfortunate. So just to show you the bills I had for this video... Uh, they're not all ideal, but just so you know, so Rhonda was going in in Savage, just so you've got context. So she's got, you know, tons of damage. She's very slow. So typically for the nuker, you'd want them to be faster, like 170 at least, maybe even 200 speed, um, and then as much damage as you can. She's in these masteries. Again, with Rhonda specifically, for people watching right now, Giant Slayer will be so much better. Uh, I've got her with Helm Smasher for Arena, but you'll do way more damage against Hydra with Helm Smasher and against any bosses as well. Uh, we had Pythion. He's in these masteries. Again, you can be more flexible. I've got him built with resistance. You don't necessarily need that. And he is in stone skin. So he's built tanky. And yeah, he's in kind of ridiculous gear compared to what you would have, but not necessarily a champion you would want. I'd say if you're a typical reviver and protector, you're going to want to build them tanky and with high speed. 
and that's kind of gonna be okay. So like still of the Drakes or something like that. Good speed, good defensive stats. Obviously they need accuracy if they're gonna put debuffs, but that's sort of it. Uh, we had uh, Ugo one, I believe. Yeah, Ugo one coming in. So she's in relentless. That makes a big difference. And really for these debuffers, you want high speed and enough accuracy. Again, you only need about 200 for normal, but as much speed as you can and make them tanky. She has these masteries. So that's your Ugo, one of the best champions for this. Haikatsune is in some random gear. I put this on because I had her ungeared. Look at this nice flat defense <laughs> gloves, right? But speed sets for her. She really should be much faster. I mean, even pretty early in the game, you should be able to build your fastest champion. It's probably Haikatsune. Be able to build them much faster. So she's fast with a bit of accuracy and some defensive stats. And she has War Master. Um, but really nothing too fancy going on with her. Uh, Mordecai looks like he's in the vault. Yep, let's grab Mordecai out of the vault. I think he's in there. And I've already, once more, I have forgotten the champions that were involved in today's video. Uh, we had the frog. Where is Mr. Frog? There he is. Get the frog out. So, frog first. Fairly standard masteries for him. And he's coming in in Stalwart and Immortal. Just sort of tanky again. Speed is about 200, lots of HP and enough accuracy to do his stuff. That's kind of just what he needs to do his job which is keeping us alive and doing some provokes. And then Mordecai, he's coming in. Again, you want good speed, enough accuracy, and then some tanky stats. And it's really, you just let the burns do the work with that. And he's got these masteries over here. So extending the burns and war master. Well, there you go, guys. Hopefully that was helpful. Uh, an overview. Yeah, a beginner's overview with some useful resources in the Discord channel to help you out as well. Get you thinking about team ideas, getting the top champions in that you have. Give it your best shot. This is, you know, beating Hydra, like I said, it's going to take you from when Hydra unlocks to get to the top of Nightmare now. It's probably going to take at least two years. So strap yourself in, get hyped whenever you pull someone like Nekmothar or Krisk so, or Geomancer, any of these insane champions for taking it down. Good luck. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.